Hello there and welcome to a drive-by code session. Uh, this video is going to be a short introduction to the async await uh, feature uh, of JavaScript. Um, my friend Whitekit, he did some code examples for async await and I'll be replaying his code examples um, and use that as a demonstration. So the async await feature has been in the ECMAScript standard uh, since 2017. Um, and it also exists in TypeScript, um, which is uh, what the code examples will be written in. However, if you are not familiar with TypeScript, but are familiar with JavaScript, you should have no problem following along. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, so this is uh, the first code example. Um, it is meant to simulate a lift off countdown. Uh, however, if you ran this code, all of these printouts would uh, would get printed out altogether immediately. And that's not really what's desired. Uh, what we really want is to have a brief pause, uh, maybe like a one second pause in between each of the print statements in, uh, or each of the console.log statements. And in a more traditional language like Python or C, uh, what you would do is you put a sleep statement in between each print statement, and that will cause the program to just pause for a specified amount of time. In this case, that's one second. So let's see how that goes. Um, so here is YKit trying to uh, write an example in Python. He's struggling with importing the sleep function though. So he tries again, do you import sleep from time? from time import sleep and okay so that one works so so in python this is how you you pause by just calling the sleep function what about in javascript well in javascript you use uh, set timeout and so this is what you do uh, so this is how you would do the same thing as this python example as uh, in, in JavaScript. Uh, let's run this. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. So, so this works. But why is this so complicated? Why does it have to be so complicated? Um, I had some people ask me in the past, why can't you just do this? Why doesn't this work? Well, if you ran this code, you again have all of these uh, print statements come out all at the same time uh, and without any pauses. So let's see a simpler uh, example with set timeout. So, um, so let me ask you a question for you, the viewer. So given this uh, code example, what should be the correct order of uh, these print statements uh, in, in the order of w which where where these texts come out. I'll give you a moment to to um, to read this code and uh, come up with your answer. Uh, you can even pause the video to do it if you want to. Okay, so if you decided to do it, congratulations. Uh, I hope you got the correct answer. Um, but if you just wanted to enjoy the show, um, if you said hello, how are you doing, and then goodbye, well, that's actually not how it works. Uh, the correct order is hello, goodbye, and then how are you doing? So, um, so let me give you a brief explanation of why that is. Um, so this is a timeline, and I'm going to circle a the lines of this program. Uh, I'm not gonna do number four and just do number five. Okay, so let's put these execution of these lines on on this timeline here. So one will happen first, and then two. Three will not happen, but what two will do is start this timer, which will only, um, 
I guess, alarm uh, 1,000 milliseconds in the future. So this is future, and this is 1,000. 1,000 milliseconds. At this point in time is when line number three will execute. However, JavaScript doesn't wait for this timer to go off before it keeps going because you're too busy for that. So, uh, and line number four is not a full statement, so I'm not gonna put line number four on the timeline, but line number five will actually happen here. Is that that's not the correct shade of green. Okay, so line number five will actually happen here because JavaScript is not going to wait for this timer to go off before it keeps going on to the next statement because JavaScript is a busy, busy person. Um, that's good and well, and hopefully that explains why this doesn't work. However, that doesn't really solve the problem of the code getting really, really complex. Uh, so there's actually a website that demonstrates this and talks about this. Uh, it's callbackhell.com. Um, it shows of this code, sort of a moderately complex piece of code that relies a lot on this callback pattern. The code is gonna get keep nesting to the right more and more. And that just gets harder and harder to work with and read. Wouldn't it be nice if in JavaScript you can write the code similarly to how you write the code in Python? And that's actually one of the things that the async await feature allows you to do. So let's see that. So let's see the async await uh, feature at work. So in order to use async await, first you need to use an async function. And an async function is mostly like a regular function, except that you slap the async keyword in front of it. And then voila, you have an async function. And within the async function, you can do any of the normal things that a normal function can do. You can write JavaScript inside an async function just as you can do with a normal function. Um, uh, now that we have defined the async function, we also have to call it. And the way you call an async function, there's no difference uh, in in it calling it versus a normal function. So we have the same set timeout example just as it before. Now we can use the power of async await to tell JavaScript to wait for this asynchronous operation before going on to the next step. How do you do that? Well, what you do is create, uh, wrap this asynchronous operation within a promise, then await it. So let's see how that's done. So this is a promise, and we're gonna await it. Um, actually, there's one more thing, which is this accept line. Okay, so, so first you create a promise object, which um, in a way, wraps the asynchronous operation that you're going to perform. And this promise object allows uh, the, async, the async function to know as long as you're awaiting it when it finishes. And when it finishes, then the await will resolve and then allow JavaScript to go on to the next line. So. And the, the way by which you tell a way that you're done is by calling this accept function, which is a standard parameter um, in this way of creating a promise natively. Uh, so in here, you can basically do anything that you want. You can write any code that you want. And at some point in time, if you call the accept function, that's the point where when you call this accept function, that's the point when control will be passed back to here and thereby going on to the next line. So let's see this code uh, in, in action. Yeah, so hello, how are you doing? And then goodbye. Now we have this uh, zero, this, these, printouts are coming in serially.
in the in the correct order. Um, now we can actually move this console dialog out of this promise now um, and generalize this idea. So now what this promise represents is a promise to resolve after a certain amount of time. Why don't we extract that into a function? What should we call it? Perhaps sleep. Um, and let's say sleep will accept a, a parameter which is in a number of microseconds milliseconds microseconds milliseconds and we'll it will put that amount into the set timeout so that's exactly how much time set timeout will wait and therefore how much time the sleep function will wait and now we can replace this code with this which just looks like a wait sleep for that long and now with the power of the sleep function, we can write the original countdown example in much the same way that it is written in Python. And let's see this in action now. Four, three, two, one, liftoffs. And that's really cool because now we can like have the egg, have your cake and eat it too. We don't have to sacrifice JavaScript way of doing asynchronous operations and still get this nice straightforward way of writing code that has to pause and, and uh, have asynchronous operations within it. That's the end of this uh, drive-by code session. Uh, White Kit and I are planning to collaborate and and produce more examples on async await. Uh, thank you for watching.